Hi everyone, welcome to this Hot Dice episode where we're doing Grimdark Black Templars. So it's going to be really uh, interesting tutorial. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. You can see here. Um, it's really effective look that I've done with basic, like maybe five colours max, and then some enamel washes. Um, so don't be frightened of those. If you've seen my other videos, you're already familiar with them. Um, if you haven't used them, stick around, see whether they're for you. But basically this video is split into two sections. So the first bit is your speed painting, really easy, effective, weathered Black Templar. And then you can stop there and do your whole army like that and it'll look great on the tabletop. Or you can move on um, to the second stage, which is just applying the enamel washes and get the really weathered look. Um, so in this video, I'm using this miniature. So I converted this one um, with some spare Sigmarines, uh, what they're called. Stormcast Eternals that I had from um, an Easy Start kit a few years ago. Um, if you see one of my other videos, which was the first time I did the Grim Dark uh, effect, um, you can have a look there. But I was left with some arms and some shields, and because this is a Black Templar, I kind of wanted to go for that crusadery look, and I took some of the old shields off the Stormcasts. So I just scraped off all the decals, um, got some green stuff inside where there's recesses and I didn't want them, and they just shamelessly stole the hammer for the right arm. So anyway, um, that's the model I'll be using. Um, let's just get started. Okay, so just kicking straight off, what I've done here is I've undercoated the model uh, already with a thin amount of the uh, Vallejo Air Paint Black. Now you don't have to do this, you can use the Chaos Black Spray, but I find that it is a different tone from normal blacks. Uh, this is a common complaint, but just to get consistency, I'm using the black um, to paint it on, so if I make any mistakes, it won't look any different. So here I've got a, a, a medium grey um, using for Vallejo. You can use any grey really, uh, but a dark one is better. Really, really very little paint on it and I'm just giving it a simple dry brush. Now, people underestimate the utility of a good dry brush, but I find that people who struggle to dry brush are just generally using too much paint, which is what I'm, <laughs> I do here time and time again. Now, if you make too many mistakes, you can just go back over it again with the black, that's the beauty of it. Just trying to get into all the raised areas, brushing down if possible to try and get the idea of the light hitting from above. So I'm going to go straight in here with the base wraith bone. The beauty of this whole process is I'm basically just using base colours, there's no blending going on and it's going to still going to give you that great effect at the end. So I wanted to put it on this nice big flat area on the shield. Putting it on nice and thin, um, I'll be able to go over if I make any mistakes, but I'm also going to want to put this on the shoulder pads. Trying to be really careful near the edges if possible, I mean I know I can always go back over with the black, but I don't really want to if I, if I can help it. See, I'm using quite thin paints here and just taking my time with it. So there we go, that's pretty much it. So um, now I want to get all the areas with the steel. So it is really just about base painting it, getting all the base colours down, and then I'll be able to go in with the washes afterwards. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to do the chipping effect. So getting some of the foam out of a carry case, very, very little paint here, and I'm just going to put it all over the raised areas, the knee pads, the tops of the helmets, the backpacks. So this is where I think the paint from the armor would have been chipped away. Now it might look a little bit heavy as you're doing it, just reduce the amount of paint, it's not the end of the world, and this is kind of the result you'll be ending up with. So what I actually did is a lead belcher and then I went with a lighter silver over the top, even thinner on top of those areas. So I'm pretty much happy. Now this is probably tabletop standard as it is. 
Um, and I would say if you just needed to play a game, I'd be happy with it like now, as it is now. But um, that said, I'm still going to need to put some of the Maltese crosses on, the classic Black Templar look. Now, I'm not very steady handed, so I usually avoid this sort of thing. So if I were you, I'd probably try and invest in some transfers. There's plenty available online. But I'm obviously feeling a little bit brave for this video. I'm painting it on. I think you can see for yourself how thin the black paint is there. So that's a really 50-50 black and water mix. And the reason I'm doing that is I can just go in with water afterwards and lift it if I need to. But there's no need to worry too much about it at the end of the day because, frankly, I can just go over with the wraith bone again at the end, which I, I do anyway. Okay, and feeling even braver, I'm going to go for the smaller pads. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, I'm, re I'm recording the voice after the fact, but I still have to hold my breath looking at this. I do hate doing details, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this series, is I'm just trying to think what's the easiest way to get the best results. And I, I think you'll, you'll find after you've watched this, you'll agree this is a really effective way of doing it. Okay, now just to pick out the silver areas where there's solid steel. I like to put it under the, the pads here. Gaining around the backpack, try not to get it on any of the pads I've just spent ages painting. Not too much silver. I don't want to um, really put any too, well, too many bright areas on here. I'm thinking this hammer probably needs some as well. Now I was tempted to go with the gold on the hammer, but uh, golden law of uh, in, in interior decoration, never use too many colours. It just looks terrible. So I'm going to go for the silver on the chest piece and on the hammer as well. You start using too many colours, the model's going to start looking busy, it's going to start looking unrealistic. You want to make this guy look like it's all about utility. I have this because I need it to smash your face in, not because it looks good. If it looks good, it's a coincidence. It's a, it's a bonus, but it's not the aim of the, of the whole look. So you see, it being relatively thin. It's just like if you see my other videos where I did the... Um, I really spent a bit more time getting the gritty, grimdark armor on the Sisters of Battle. It's the thinness that's going to help you because I'm adding layers on top of this to get the gritty look. So that's pretty much good as it gets in terms of the base level. I saw this really cool thing on Instagram. So um, I have an Instagram account where I show all my progress shots and all my models uh, finished, get a better close-up look. And I also follow loads of really great painters on there. And I saw this great Maltese cross painted on the front of the helmet and I just had to try it. On a model that's essentially quite monochrome. It's, it's basically like a cream and a black. It really helps to add just a little bit more detail to help your model stand out. And this is the best way I've seen for a Black Templar. It looks fantastic. And I was worried it was going to be difficult, but it proved to be very, very simple. Just trying to get the peaks at the end of the Maltese cross. Okay, so for the scroll here, now the problem is I've used a lot of cream, and scrolls are usually cream. Um, so I thought I'd experiment with a bit of a grey, stony look, um, see if I could maybe make it look a bit more weathered when I go in with the enamel washes later. But just to help it stand out, I think it would have been too much cream here otherwise. So there's all the basing done. Now I'm going straight in with the AK. Uh, interactive winter streaking grime. 
being quite liberal with this, but you'll see how I'm applying it. I'm actually dappling it on. Uh, where I'm looking at the flat, large flat areas, I want to have pooling. Now, when you're doing washes, you don't normally want that, but with this, I do want the pooling. That's how I'm getting it looking like there's grime, there's built up layers of dirt. And I'm just putting this all over the cream areas. So, a good part of. Uh, <clears throat> good thing about these enamel uh, washes is they do help get your contrast up. So first thing I do with the silver areas as I go in with the contrast black, you can see how blue it is. Um, but that's not going to be too much of a problem when I go in with the washes later. Nice and thick. This is going to help you build up the depth of colour. So now I'm going in the white wash, and I'm also just dappling this, and I want to clear up the spaces, slowly, slowly, gradually removing the enamel washes. This is why I love the enamel washes. You can't mess it up. You just can't. You can no, no matter how much you put on, you can take it all off again with the white wash. See how easy it just comes away with a little bit on the brush. So I want to be careful with how much I'm putting on. It'll automatically pull into the recesses, giving you that dirty grime look. And if you use very little, you can also keep a little bit of the dappling to make it look like it's layered grime and dirt on the flat surfaces. So I'm doing, just doing this all over. And once, while I'm waiting for the enamel wash to uh, dry, I normally go in and do different areas where I haven't applied them. So here, to build up the contrast, I'm putting some lead belcher onto the um, silver area. And then what I've done then is the enamel wash over the top of it when it's done, you can see the same effect. And that really just ties the model all in together because if you're gonna have dirt, it's gonna affect everything on the model equally. I've put that onto the metallics. I've also put it onto the glove. Now you see the glove there? That was actually uh, black with a, uh, a dry brush on it. But as soon as I put the brownie kind of enamel wash on it, it's kind of giving it that that weathered leather look. So I'm really seeing the utility of this this um, this stuff. I should probably add I'm not sponsored in any way. I just uh, I'm just really enjoying using it. So now I'm playing with this scroll area. I think I've maintained the contrast. I want to maybe clear up some of the metal work there. Maybe put a little bit too much on. I want to put, bring out some of that shine try and use the white spirits to encourage it to pull into the recesses. Being extra super careful to look for those harsh lines. So I'm just going to pop some purple on here, just um, an interest colour. It's normally my go-to because it's quite dark, but it's different. And when I put a contrast wash over the top of that, it'll, it'll dull it right in and make it look professional anyway. So here we go. So where I think I've not got enough contrast, I'm just going to pop it in the recesses. That'll help it stand out. Straight out of the pot, nice and thick. You can see there the difference on, the, on that glove. That glove's had nothing done to it other than dry brushed grey and then the enamel wash on it and you can see the difference. So for the base, um, I just wanted to do a quick base here for this tutorial. I had found some of this uh, Astro Granite Debris technical paint from Games Workshop in a drawer that I haven't used. I think it's really great stuff, but I just I wouldn't really use it if I'm being honestly on an army. Uh, it's just it just costs so much money. <laughs> it's not cheap stuff, and it doesn't go that far. So now the eyes. So here's a quick uh, eye tutorial. What I've done is I've watered down the corn red. 
and I'm being pretty sloppy with it. I'm going on the lens, but I'm also going just outside of the lens as well. So that's how we're going to get a little bit of that demonic glow. Um, so that's just going in and around the whole area. And then what I'm doing is I'm slowly adding a little bit of orange, Troll Slayer orange, each time to the um, corn red. And each time that circle's getting smaller and smaller until I'm on the lens only and then I add a bit more orange and then I'm in the center of the lens only and then I'm adding pure orange and I'm at the center dot of the orange and that's going to give me the glow and the transition from darker to lighter. So I'm going to put some enamel wash now down onto the base, the AK uh, Winter Streak and Grime, so that ties the whole model together. It makes no sense for me not to put the weathering on to the base. At the end of the day that's the environment he's in. You want to seat him into the environment to give it that realistic grim look. So just picking out the details, make sure you don't forget about these. They are, they're really what help you make the model look finished. Just using my favourite here. And the nice dark brown is actually going to act as a highlight here, just picking out the edges. It looks really bright under this harsh light, but when you see the photograph at the end, you'll see it actually gives you a nice highlight. I'm always thinking light from the top, always thinking where's the light coming from, only putting it where the light's going to hit it. And I think it's starting to look pretty good now. I'm going to say this is approaching finished. I don't want to start putting too much into it. So this is another great product, weathering pigment, dust, and dirt deposits. This is enamel as well. So what I can do is I can just slap this onto the model. First, I'm going to put it in all the recesses where I think dirt and grime is going to be going. And because it's enamel wash, it means no matter how much I put on, it can all come back off again with a white spirit and it will dry on solid. And you can see it looks <laughs> it looks really thick and obvious and harsh when I'm putting it on. It does dry much differently to how it goes on, just like the enamel wash does, uh, the winter streaking grime. So I'm even being quite careful. With, I'm I'm still new with this, so I'm being a bit tentative. I was like, well, do I put it here? Will it ruin it? But I've just got to believe I'm putting it everywhere, and I'll probably have to go in again for a second time once I believe it's going to look okay. So I'm wondering how high up I'm going to go. I'm thinking higher up there should be less, right? So I think I'm happy with that. I'm just going to start taking it off with the white wash here. You can see dappling again to try and give it that organic, that natural look. I want to avoid all harsh lines. It just completely destroys the realism look of it. You can see how it's, it's not a science. There is just a, do I have too much? Do I have too little? Should I put more on? I'm just playing around with it. And last touch is to put it onto the base like I had forgotten I had to go back in with it because as I said earlier if it doesn't look like it belongs in the scene it loses the grimdark realism so so now it's on the base the whole model should be tied together and here's the end product as you can see really happy with the result Okay, so there we go, that's the whole process from start to finish. Like I said, you saw there was a stage there in the middle where you could stop, um, there's your tabletop standard, or you could continue it a little bit longer. Um, it's not a long process, either way, um, and the results, uh, I think, I'm really pleased with them. I think it's one of the better miniatures I've ever done. 
So um, let me know what you think in the comments, um, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in Grimdark. Alright, thanks for watching Hot Dice. See you next time.